great opportunity for us to play against one of the premier teams in college football. Team that played in the college football playoff last year and uh, to me looks better than ever. Um, obviously, uh, you know, they're extremely well coached. They're big, they're physical, they're fast, they're skilled. Um, you know, they have their set, sights set on a national championship as they should be. Um, they're certainly worthy of that goal and expectation when you look at their film. Um, this is a team with, with zero holes. Um, as you look at them, they, they do not have a weakness. And uh, it's going to be a great challenge for our young men. And uh, we're going to go up there and we're going to fight and compete like crazy and do all we can to try to win the game against a very good team. And uh, we're not going there for any other reason to, to give it our best effort to win the game. And uh, I think it's going to be a, a, a fantastic, fantastic opportunity and challenge for, for our guys. And I think they relish this opportunity. From a what? I'm sorry. Financial? Financial aspect of it. How can you get better from a game like What do you mean, financial aspect? I don't know what you mean by that. I'm sorry. I'm not. How can you get better as a program from a game like this? Well, we get a chance to go compete against the best. And uh, anytime you get a chance to go compete against the best, it's an opportunity to get better. The financial aspects, I mean, I, I don't live in a financial world, so <laughs> I live in a football world. But it's a, just a chance to go play against, you know, a team that, like I said, played in the college football playoff last year. And, uh, you know, our guys are excited to go compete. And it'll be, uh, it'll be a, great, a great opportunity to, to grow as a team. Zion's had a couple starts under his belt now. How has he progressed? He's doing, he's doing some things better and better each week. Uh, you know, uh, last week he played uh, – an outstanding defense, you know, fast, physical. Um, he's playing without a lot of weapons around him that we had hoped would be around him. Um, and, you know, he's adapting and learning. Uh, he grows from his mistakes, you know. I mean, everyone's going to make mistakes in a game. That's, that's human nature. But what you want to see is guys uh, learn from those mistakes, mistakes and apply them going forward. And I think that Zion's doing a good job of that. Jim, have you gotten to know Jim Harbaugh quite well or all of you? Uh, I know him from a distance. Uh, I, have, I don't believe that we've ever competed against each other. Uh, I have great respect for him. I think he's one of the premier coaches in all of football at any level. I think he's proven that by the records that he's been able to put up in the NFL and at Michigan. I have great respect for the way he kind of weathered that storm a couple of years ago and, uh, and hung in there and, and built this thing the way he wanted to build it. Uh, I'm sure that wasn't easy on him to be criticized the way he was, given the, the skins that he's put on the wall. So uh, I, have a, I have a tremendous amount of respect and admiration for him. I think he's uh, a guy with in, incredible integrity. And, uh, you know, I'm, but I don't know him. I mean, I've met him and I, we've talked, but we don't have a personal relationship. Briante Brown started a tight end. <laughs> he was not listed number two deep. So was that a case of him having a good week in practice? And talk about his development and how he worked in that position. I'm glad you brought that up. I, I meant to bring that up Sunday in our, in our, our uh, video conference and uh, meant to bring it up this morning as well. And you guys are going to get a chance to talk to him. But um, it's an incredible story. It really is to, to think about where he was when I first got here. Uh, I, I didn't meet him, I didn't meet Rayante until one day during our summer camps, our youth camps. And this kid walks on the field and he walks up to me and he says, hi. And I'd never met him and I'd been here since November and this was June. And I thought he was a basketball player because he was, you know, 6'8 and rail thin. And, you know, I, I can't confirm how much weight he lost when he got ill, but he lost a lot. Um, I'm, I'm told that he dipped under 200 pounds. And for him to fight back the way he has is just so inspirational. And then to find his way into a starting role last week was, I mean, I'm beyond words, you know, to, to think about what he did. So he earned it. He worked for it. Um, he endured some serious hardships. He spent you know, a lot of time in the hospital. I'm sure he had doubts, um, but he came back strong. He's got his body weight back up. You know, he had come to me at some point in the in the training camp and said hey you know I think I can help out at tight end and uh, 
I said, have you ever played tight end? And I don't think he said yes, <laughs> you know. Uh, but uh, in my opinion, it's, a, it's one of the great stories in college football this year. It'll, and I'm glad you're recognizing it because it deserves to be recognized. It's not always about, you know, the great stories don't come just from the teams that win all the games and have, you know, all the, you know, national media coverage. There's so many great stories in college football, and this is one of them. This guy is an NFL offensive tackle, in my opinion, and he will, he will grow back into that, you know, over time. And uh, it's just, you know, you, you want to be around people like that. You want to be around men like that. Tim, is there anything else you can share about what he's been through, or would you rather have just have him? I don't have the knowledge. That was when, uh, uh, oh, shoot, what's his name? Oh, Edsel, when Edsel was here. So I don't, I don't really know. Uh, I, I think I'd be more comfortable with Rayante talking about it. Jim, in your whole life, have you ever been as big an underdog as people think you are this weekend in anything you've ever done? I don't know what the spread is, so I can't answer that question. I don't look at that. Uh, it doesn't matter to me. I've never looked at spreads. I mean, I've been made aware of spreads. Um, I, I don't care, you know. I mean, I just want to go out and compete and compete as hard as we can to win. Um, we're not going to talk about those types of things. We're going to talk about being our best on every single play we play and line it up and being better the next play. And that's, that's what I think that people that have success, that's what they do. Um, so that's our mindset. Their defense has only given up 236 yards per game. How are they different from the Syracuse defense that you faced? Well, they're structurally they're different. You know, Syracuse did a lot more um, in terms of trying to penetrate. Uh, Michigan is, is, like I said to start this thing, they're big, they're fast, they're physical. I mean, they run to the ball and hit you. Um, they have great confidence in what they do. They sit on routes because they know they can because they've got the speed to go deep with people. Um, they're very violent with their hands when they disengage. You know, when you watch their film, you're not going to see guys loafing. You're not going to see guys on the ground. Uh, and they just try to pound you into oblivion. And, uh, you know, they get off the field on third down. They stop the run. They get off the field on third down. And, uh, I mean, they're, they're, they're fun to watch on defense now, unless you're getting ready to play them, right? But, the, you know, I, I appreciate great defense. Um, and so I appreciate the way they play. As a first-year coach, it's kind of hard to build depth. What do you think your stand as a program is your depth right now? Well, to start with, we have the smallest roster in Division One football at 105. Um, you know, most places are 120, 125, 130. So, number one, we're not allowed to have depth because we're, on, we're, we're capped out at 105. And I, I'm not exactly sure the reason why, but that is a fact. Uh, I wish it wasn't a fact because we could certainly use bodies uh, and, and players. So, our, number one, our depth suffers because of that. Uh, number two, uh, we've gotten a lot of guys banged up in these first three weeks. Um, and so, you know, our depth is not where it needs to be. And over time, and hopefully we can add to our roster and, and have more than, like I said, a nation low 105, uh, you know, we'll find players. You know, we'll get walk-ons that will develop into, you know, Bechtels and, and, and Flynn's. Uh, We'll get bigger. We'll get more physical. You know, as these guys continue to work with Matt King, they'll get more physical. They get big. I'm talking about, you know, those, the backup guys, the young guys. I think we brought in some really good young freshmen this year that are about about to start seeing some playing time. You know, I talk about Demond Brinson and Donovan Branch and Nate Voorhees and Isaiah Davis. Uh, defensively, those guys are going to start playing. Kylie Hicks is going to start playing. Justin Jolie has been playing. He's going to start playing more. These guys are have been depth guys, but they. They have a physicality to them that we like. They have, they have, uh, they have a, a, uh, a physique in terms of their skeletal structure that we like, and we're gonna, we're gonna play them, you know, and we're gonna keep developing that depth. Do you talk to your team about the environment? I'm sure, <coughs> I don't think any of these kids have ever played in front of 100,000 people. You've certainly been on the sidelines for games that have looked and felt like this. Is there anything you might share with them about what to expect? Or like. I shouldn't shake my head no because that'd be a lie. Yeah, I've talked to him about it, but I'm not going to talk to him about it this week. We talked about it. And we talk about everything in camp. You know, we talk about all these things. Um, our our objective is to go into any place we go and shut out the noise. 
and concentrate on the things that we can control. And that's what's happening in front of us on the field, not what's happening around us in the stands, not the noise, uh, not our opponent. It's just what we can control. And what we can control is our ability to focus during the game on what's happening on that green grass with the white lines on it. And uh, so I think it's a distraction if you talk about other things. You know, and so that's, that's our mindset. Now, I'll tell you what we do do is we always go to the stadium the day before the game. And uh, we do that so that they can walk into the stadium and see it and feel it and understand where the locker room is and how they get to the field and where the play clocks are and where the scoreboard is and what the turf's like. And I think that helps them adjust, you know, rather than just running out on the field on a Saturday. But in terms of talking about it, you know, we, we, we talk about it back there. And now we talk about just playing good football. You talk about Nate Carter and how he has just overall played this year. Because he had a season low rushing yards on Saturday, but I thought it might have been his best game. Those were tough yards he got. <laughs> he got a lot of those on his own. He got tough yards, and he's a tough runner, and he's going to get everything out of every single play. I really don't think I've seen a play yet where he didn't maximize the yards that were there. And, uh, you know, he doesn't say much. He, he's just a tough, uh, competitive, really good person that it's, it's very important to, you know, the way he takes care of his body, the way he runs, the way he practices, the way he meets, the way he presents himself, the way he isn't, you know, around his teammates. I mean, he's the kind of man you want on your team, you know, and then he goes out on Saturday, and like you said, he maximizes every single play, and that's what good football players do. So certainly a dependable young man who's, who's a, lot of, a lot of fun to be around and coach. How's Devontae with his shoulder? Uh, he, he's sore. You know, he's very sore, um, but he's a warrior, you know. I mean, like I told you guys after the game, he really wasn't, you know, scheduled to play, maybe a couple plays. But when, when Brian Bruton broke his finger in pregame and then, you know, well, he's having surgery tomorrow, so you know, but he uh, hurt his shoulder during the game, you know, Devontae said, hey, I'm stepping up, you know, I'm, I'm playing. And he fought through pain, and uh, I expect that he'll fight through it again this week. I think that's the kind of kid he is. And I know this, if he's not able to, there's a dang good reason why not. You know, I mean, because he's a fighter.